Rocket, rocket, mountain, mountain, pile up, high, high. Uh, we have the names of the planets, Uranus, Neptune, Jupiter, the planets that you have to go by. You see the mountainous depiction of Nibiru. It's a big triangle there, a mountainous depiction. Nibiru, a mountainous planet. And look at this. You look, you can see there's seven dots. The route from Nibiru to Earth, God Enlil went by the planets. And guess what? If you count how many planets there are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh planet. So it's a very interesting thing, again, when we start to look at this information by a, an ancient culture, giving us very technical information that we can now understand with our understanding of science and technology. So another interesting aspect of the, of the story is where the Sumerians describe how this planet that the, the Anunnaki come from, Nibiru, has a very interesting tale of basically creating our Earth and the asteroid belt, that the whole explanation for how our solar system came to be is explained by the Sumerians and the interaction of what they called an intruder planet. They said that basically Nibiru was a rogue planet. Now they wrote this down as translated, or excuse me, as transcribed to them, bequeathed to them by the Anunnaki. They said that this, this Nibiru, what we now call a planet X under modern terms to try and identify this ancient planet, Planet X, Nibiru, it came in, we're talking billions of years ago when this happened, in the formation of our solar system, 4.7 billion years ago, whatever, a long time ago. Planet X gets pulled in by the gravita gravitational pull of our outer planets and comes onto a path where it slams into our Earth. Now, it doesn't actually hit our Earth, but the main, the main moon of Nibiru, labeled North Wind, you can see it's sweeping arcing under planet X, collided with our planet in such a way that it literally split our planet in half and strewed off the rest of the debris to become the asteroid belt. Nibiru went on to have a long, very long, 3600 year orbit around our sun. You can see all the other planets are going you know, uh, around in more of a circular orbit, but Nibiru has a huge elliptical orbit that takes it 3600 years to orbit once around our sun. So it's a very interesting tale that they basically said that now when we look at where the asteroid belt is, that's where Nibiru comes in through its, its paths. So every 3,600 years, Nibiru loops around through the inner part of our solar system, passing between Mars and Jupiter. Now here's a little interesting tidbit from the ufology side. Whether it's true or not, there's a very famous secret government project called Majestic 12, MJ-12. Now, MJ-12 was a council of 12 people that looked into the whole alien abduction UFO phenomenon in the U.S. government. But very interestingly enough, MJ-12 could also might have stand for Mars-Jupiter 12th planet. What that means specifically, or if there's any connection, don't know, but I found that interesting. And if you look at the diagram here, there's two points I want to show. If you look between the, the distance between Mars and Jupiter, where the asteroid belt is, there's clearly enough planet, there's clearly enough space based on the orbit disbursement of the other planets for a planet to easily pass through that space. And what I've done is showed a, 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 just a very simple mathematical calculation that doing a rough idea of when this initial collision took place, the initial formation of our solar system, roughly 4.7 billion years ago, if Nibiru is passing through the inner solar system every 3,600 years, a simple mathematical calculation shows 4.7 billion years, the time of its initial pass, divided by its, how long it takes to do it, we're looking at over a million times that Nibiru has passed through the inner solar system. So it might not always affect Earth. Now we know that it has affected Earth because of what the Sumerians have told us. We've had rumors on the internet that say, ah, oh, this planet is coming back and it's going to cause what the Sumerians describe, a great flood the Noah's Ark scenario. I don't agree with this information as everyone has now seen for themselves 2003 came and, and went. So a lot of people have heard misinformation about this topic but what I've tried to show is let's stick to the facts. There's enough evidence to show this is legit without blowing it out of proportion. Now here's one of the tablets actually showed, excuse me, stored in the British Museum that explains this tale of how Nibiru came in, whacked our inner planet, created the asteroid belt, as the Bible calls it, the hammered out bracelet. 
So we have the artifacts to very specifically tell us this tale of how our solar system formed, and more specifically Earth. Very interestingly enough, another point to back this up is the Pangea factor. Now if Earth was whacked and made into just a half a planet, a half a chunk, if it was, right as we saw here, spewed off to just make half a, half a planet, well, Pangea, we know that from, from our history, at one point, it was all just one connected landmass, a big lump of land. So the other half was just water, an open basin. That, now over time, we've had this through continental drift, you know, the, 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 the way the, the, like a skin of an apple, the continents have been drifting, plate tectonics show us, at one time, these were all connected. So this again confirms the idea that it was just one big lump of land. Now the Sumerians, again, have a very interesting parallel to the biblical tales. One of those, renowned, is the flood tablet. There was a, a, a British archaeologist in the early 1900s that was excavating, doing excavations in Iraq, and all of a sudden he finds this tablet that he can't believe what it says. He has to throw his arms up and run out of the room screaming, I can't believe what I found. Basically it's a, a tale, the exact same word-for-word -word description of a a man being chosen by a god to build a craft. But it's not Noah, it's Utenpesin. <laughs> Utenpesin. And it's basically, you can see his name listed here, it's basically a Sumerian man who's chosen by an Anunnaki and given the knowledge to say, listen, you need to build this ship, take all the surrounding animals and your family with you, because there's going to be a great flood. When our planet passes by, it's going to crack off a big old chunk of ice in Antarctica, and the water level is going to raise 300 feet. And that's what happened. At least that's how the Sumerians describe it. And it's kind of like the chicken or the egg syndrome. What came first? And here we have a Noah's Ark tale told in its original Sumerian stone version, unchanged. Just like here, a depiction showing the Sumerians worshipping an Anunnaki. Now, the giants upon the earth, as the Bible say. Here we have a Sumerian, uh, excuse me, let me go back one, a Sumerian stellar, a wall relief, showing that the Anunnaki were actually physically bigger beings than us. Now how tall they were, how, how much larger, I don't know. They are always depicted as being aesthetically very muscular, fit, uh, good genetics, <laughs> and larger than us. So some more interesting information that's come out throughout time is, I found this to be very interesting, this was held by a uh, a Turkish admiral found in 1513. It's the Paris Reis map. Now what we're seeing here is a time when when the continents were actually still connected. You can see North and South America uh, still connected. You can see the boats there but the land masses are actually still connected in a way where this geography was inscribed and shown by ancient man and recorded and left to us in ways that still boggle uh, modern science as to how they could have known this information. They were able to show the topography of Antarctica under the ice sheet, meaning today we have ground penetrating radar and satellites that even though there's two miles thick ice covering Antarctica, we can see what the actual topography of the land is using this penetrating radar. Well gee, here we have from 1513 a, a map clearly showing the accurate topography 